I really thought that this fight, had it gone five rounds, we're seeing at least 20 shots from Mateus Gamrod, man. He's going out there. He's going to put it on Rafael Fazeev fast, early. What we saw in that first round was a, a feeling out period, man. It was a lot of chess, a lot of high-level martial arts and thinking in there. Do you think, because it started to speed up a touch going into the second round, do you think that Mateus Gamra would have been able to inflict his will in his game plan, or do we think that we just did not see enough to make any conclusion of this fight? I'm going a little bit more with the latter, Derek. I think uh, at, at the point in which the second round started, we saw Fazeev really start to pick up the pace, start to throw a little more effort into those hits. Maybe it's why he ended up getting injured the way he did, because of the... the, the um, explosiveness and that's one of his greatest gifts like you were saying before but because of that i think the the tempo was picking up but time would only have told if mateus gamer would have been able to keep up but i don't think so derek i think we would have been more successful if this would have played out in a five-round fight what do you think though do you think that pressure was really jumping up was the uh, was the power too much for mateus to actually at that moment nonetheless three rounds down the road yeah, I, I think there's really just not enough data to be able to make any assessment and not sound like a fool. You know what I mean? You could talk as confident as you want. Oh, yeah, Gamera would have won. Fazeev would have won. But there's there's just no way to know. You just have to take it as the, as the L and, and keep it pushing. This is very similar to Curtis Blades' Tom Aspinall, where he blows his knee out early. And then there's really no, like, we need to see that fight again. Like, Curtis Blades, Tom Aspinall, we need to see that eventually. I think this is going to be a fight that if Fazeev can recover back to full health, come back to full explosiveness, I want to see this fight again. But this does beg the question that the implications were there. I said in the preview show, one of these guys, they're on the cusp of really waking up this division, of being that top four upper echelon fighter. It has now been awarded to Mateusz Gamrot. So the question ultimately becomes... He lost to Benil Daryush when they were matched up. That's a top four guy. So of the top four, one of them, you already couldn't get past. The other three, Charles Oliveira, Justin Gaethje, Islam Akashev. I might be missing one. Does he get past those guys? I don't think so, Derek. I mean, uh, if I wish, like you said, that there was more of a conclusive performance in, way, in order for us to be able to analyze at least a little bit more. But right now, like you said, Benny as is the lowest hanging fruit on that ladder, and he's still getting get past. It sounds like a hell of a mountain to climb. I, yeah. I just don't feel confident in saying it right now, Derek. Maybe yes, but I don't think so. What about you? Dustin Poirier was the guy that I forgot on that list. Maybe can get past a Dustin Poirier. You know, you really focus on the wrestling and stuff like that. But then again, Poirier got the jujitsu, so it's tough, and the fantastic boxing. Either way, it's just going to be something that we're going to have to kind of figure out because realistically. I don't know what the next move is. If none of those guys, you can actually like go ahead and get matched up with them. He has to fight somebody. You would imagine he doesn't want to fight down. I think Michael Chandler is a potential um, matchup that you have right there. Jalen Turner is calling for a rematch. It's just, I don't know, man. Inconclusive, terrible way to end um, a main event. And then for Rafael Fazeev, like I said, you just hope he goes back into that kind of Tom Aspinall recovery mode to, to come back and come back on top. But do you have anything else on this main event? I mean, I genuinely don't, uh, I don't see Mateusz Gamar getting the bump he was, he's hoping for from this win. I mean, yeah, it was a win. It was a TKO on paper, but I think that Jalen Turner rematch is probably the most likely outcome we're looking for. And if that's the case, still going to be a good scrap nonetheless. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to just think, why wouldn't he get the bump? Only reason I, I could think that he wouldn't is because it just was a shitty way to end the fight. But then again, Cheeto Vera, is there much of a difference when he beat Sean O'Malley? Like he got a bump on the injury TKO, right? And it's a little bit different because it's like you kicked his knee and then his foot fell asleep or whatnot. But to me, it's just the same kind of circumstance of just an injury is what won the fight, right? Yeah, I, I can see where you're drawing the, the similarities, Derek. But even then, arguably, Sean O'Malley got more of a bump after too. Like he, even <laughs> then, you know, the sorrow is a little bit yeah. more. And I do, I genuinely think just a lot of people that are looking to sign that Mateusz Gamera fight and be like, well, he didn't really deserve that win. On to the next. Unfortunately, I think that is the case. I hope not, because he is a good talent nonetheless. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, listen, a win is a win is a win. Um, some people didn't like that he was celebrating the win, but he went out there and technically he did get his hand raised. So shout out to Mateusz, the gamer Gamrot, and uh, we'll see what's next for this lightweight division. I thought it was not going to be stagnant after this. It might still be. I mean, we'll see.